Hi guys, Derek Best, uh, Beacon Fight for Life. Today I'm joined with an exciting gentleman by the name of Clyde Haddo, um, who's the CEO of the charity arm of For Fortuna Foundation, or the Fo uh, Fortuna Foundation, which is a charity arm for Fortuna, which uh, is an accounting firm in Balcata, Western Australia. Uh, Clyde's also the GM for account accounting um, firm outsource called Outsource Pro. Um, he's worked with Westpac, AMP, had director's role, roles in LA, England, um, dealt with the Special Olympics, also been part of St. John's Crisis Centre on the Gold Coast, where he helped people with domestic violence, fed the children. Um, Clive loves to do charity work and, make what, and really impacting people and making a difference in someone else's life. But rather than hear it from me, welcome Clive. Thanks, Derek. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me today about no this. Um, as you guys know, that the, pro the purpose of the Beacon Fight for Life is to help reduce the number of Australians taking their own life. Um, Clive shared with me just previously that he's had some personal dealings with suicide. So, Clive, could you please share that with me? Sure. Um, when I was in my uh, early 30s, um, my, uh, my mother actually decided that... Um, uh, to commit suicide uh, for whatever reasons we are not aware of um, mm -hmm. because there was no uh, explanation which uh, I suppose makes, makes closure really difficult uh, with these situations and I'm mm -hmm. sure that this happens a lot of the times with suicide where closure is very very difficult to be achieved by either the parents or mm -hmm. siblings or, or friends um, uh, it's very funny though because what uh, I think we found is that uh, my mother was pretty much uh, the life and soul of any party and okay. she was always uh, the one that would um, uh, be p where people would gravitate to so and as I spoke to you earlier on you know Derek it's um, it's sometimes we um, when you when you have these campaigns like how are you or are you doing okay and mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. um, the thing that people say is they say yes, but there's a facade that you need to try and get through sometimes. And in my mother's case, it was this facade of being always friends to everybody, life and soul. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever had any, nobody ever dealt deep enough to try and find out what the reasons might be. Okay. Um, so I, it's, it's unfortunate to, uh, it, it happened a long time ago, but funny enough, it still sits with you. And, um, and I think that uh, the work that you're trying to do to prevent some of this, um, which is really trying to get people to open up about what are the things that would, would make them commit suicide? Why yeah. would they? What, what is the, mm. the driving force? Is it just a, to uh, achieve some level of peace, whatever that might be? Yeah. Or is it some revenge? Or what mm. is it? Or is it, um, is it, is it a thought process of... Um, well, I just can't take it anymore. I just can't make it. I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, from my you know, from my understanding, you know, it's an intrinsic intrinsic um, thing where they just want to be, you know, stop the pain. And you know, what we're about with the beacon fight for life or the beacon of light is to identify those people around us. So, sure. thank you for sharing that story with us. Um, you've got quite a decorated background in finance. Sure. Why, why charity work? What why what draws you to charity work? It's funny, uh, uh, Derek, I suppose it's not anything that's, uh, that's earth moving or, or shattering, but um, you know, the old adage of um, treat other people like you'd like to be treated, mm -hmm. I think has always stuck with me. Um, one of my traits and one of my, I suppose you might call it the downfall, or you might call it the strength, is that I've never been indebted to anybody. So mm -hmm. I've always tried to, whether it sounds a bit crazy, but I've always made sure that people are rather indebted to me than I am to them, mm -hmm. um, which was a case of sort of giving back. Mm. Uh, but after spending a lot of time in the finance uh, sector and also having seen, um, I suppose, the way some of the senior managers or directors and, and people in high, um, high quality roles and high paid roles uh, become so insular about uh, the place that they live in, the size of their home, the size of their mm. car, all those things. Uh, you know, you can only live in one room at a time. You can only drive one car at a time. Very true. 
um, and um, and I, I've always thought, well, you know, it's it's there's such a nice feeling when you um, when you help somebody, and you know, it can be the smallest thing on earth. It can be the most tiny thing that you do for somebody, um, and yet it makes such a big difference. And it doesn't have to cost money. It doesn't cost any money. Uh, but it, it does form, it does fall sort of out of the, onto that category of do unto others like you would like them to do unto you, mm -hmm. which is pretty much so, um, you know, if, 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 if you find somebody that is, um, is, is struggling, uh, just help them mm. as much as you can. It doesn't, need, you don't need to give them a million dollars. Sometimes it might just be a, a meal. Thing. Sometimes it might be a discussion. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it might be an introduction to somebody else. It's there's small things that make big differences in our lives. Ah, excellent. And just being aware of what's going on could be one of those things. Of course. Yeah. Um, and I think that uh, the important thing is that, um, and we've talked about it before, is that um, try and dig a little bit deeper. Mm. If you think that your family or friends might have an issue is um, don't just say, oh, you're doing okay and, and get a yes, no answer. Um, try and dig a little bit deeper. You know, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about that? Look under the surface. Look under that surface because if you don't, they, they, they will keep harboring that themselves. And mm. uh, it's, a, it's a very complex issue because it, 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 it sits on so many mental issues with people and sometimes it's mindset sometimes mm. it's background sometimes it's family um sometimes uh, and it's very topical these days uh I, I didn't share with you earlier on um but my granddaughter has um uh, has adhd mm. and um she uh, last year spent nearly six months in the children's hospital and she's tried to commit suicide about about eight or nine times and she's 15 years old oh, that's very sad. so um i think there's things like that that um you know sort of you wonder why when when there's everything to live for mm. there's there, there's no there's no poverty there's no shortage of food there's no shortage of anything mm. you just wonder why that mm. is the case and i guess yeah that's where the work needs to be done um again thank you for sharing that story sure the uh, Fortuna, where the company that you work with or for, or the CEO of the foundation side of things, but a great business model, working from birth through till death. I don't know if you can see this behind us, but there's a big sign here, and it's it's a very detailed um, and well structured layout of how they can help people from birth to death. Um, the charity. Um, you have a laundry van. It's called Positive Spin. Yes. Actually, do you want to give us a little bit of an insight about Fortuna and what it does? Sure. Um, I think it's, uh, I've only been, uh, I've known uh, uh, Dinesh, who is the uh, uh, the owner of the business. Mm. I've known him for well over 10 years now. And Fortuna has started from nowhere uh, and is now in the top 100 accountancy firms in Australia. So wow. they've done okay. they've done really well. But along with that journey, has um, has been this desire to be able to help as well, to hand back to the community. Uh, in years gone by, as you would know, Derek, um, companies had to, there was always some sort of uh, strategy plan that they had to help somewhere along the line. But in our case, it, it was something that was not required of us at all mm. and, uh, and was set up um, as how can we help? So. When, when I eventually came on last year, uh, we looked at it and I said, well, what is our tagline? And the tagline was that we want to just help people. Mm. And um, they said they didn't quite know what, what that might entail. And uh, through a number of research items, they found that um, in the northern suburbs, there was a, a need for homelessness support. In the mm. southern suburbs, it had it, yep. but there was a, a need for that. So. They, um, they decided to start this van, uh, which was actually supported by the Premier, by the way, as well, okay. uh, and some mining companies. We've got two, uh, two mining companies that give us um, sponsorship, which, uh, which really helps us along. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the van was established 
we had some great input from, and you might know them, Orange Sky. Okay, I've heard we, of them. We've had some great input uh, from them as well, and um, we developed this van, and now that van is being used uh, uh, five days a week. and um, In the Northern Corridor? In the Northern Corridor. Okay, and that's to help the homeless and the working poor. What does that mean, working poor? Yeah, it's it's interesting because as the economy has struggled through this, um, uh, first of all through COVID and then secondly through um, through interest rate rises, mm. it's been um, it's been very apparent that this uh, the, the number of people that are just making or hardly making ends meet mm. um, are now coming to use the van as well. Uh, the one thing with the van, though, um, I think uh, Derek is that. Uh, uh, and I know that you wanted to ask me about this, but we wanted to do a shout out to to No Limits, yeah, which is absolutely. with uh, with a lady by the name of Janine, who um, they managed to actually man our van. And I use the word man, but it's man and woman, so yeah. it's uh, volunteers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, but to 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 help volunteers, you know, man the van, and uh, they do that five days a week, which is which is fantastic. Um, and uh, we do work with other charities. So our charity mm. is one of, um, of more collaborate, uh, collaboration driven mm. rather than trying to develop some sort of, uh, we don't want to do it at the Smith family or anything like that. We mm. want to just, where we want to be is to just do little small projects that really try and make a difference mm -hmm. and also to collaborate with other charities. And what I found really interesting before, which is a fan, I've got sense of a fan, fantastic concept, was really, Made it made sense to me, which you give people dignity. Yeah, yeah. And again, with the Beacon Fight for Life, what we do again, reducing you know suicide. I get, my people might not see the synergy here, but I think what people might be that turning point where they can start to get some dignity and some momentum back in their life. Would that be a, a fair comment? Yeah, it's it's a case of um, you know when people come there uh, or when they wander in the streets. Um, I know it might sound like it's a really silly little thing, but mm. if their clothes are clean, mm. they're feeling like they're refreshed, mm. it does give them some sense of dignity. Yeah. Whereas if they're grubby, the clothes haven't been washed for weeks on end, it does have an impact on your on mm. your own social well being. Yeah. Um, so we just we uh, we give them we we hope that we give them uh, dignity. What we've also found uh, just very quickly, uh, Derek, is that when we have homeless people or the working poor that come to, um, to do uh, their washing, we have them for about an hour. Mm -hmm. So approximately an hour, hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to make best use, how can we make best use of that time helping those people get either back on track mm -hmm. um, or just having somebody to talk to and have a cup of coffee with, or yeah. just to share, you know. Um, and that's a very important part of it because while they're waiting for their washing and that to, to wash and dry, yeah. they might as well just sit there and have a chat. And yeah, it's amazing. Meaning, meaningful conversation. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing what you find out, you know. Yeah. Um, we've, uh, through Janine's actually uh, charity, uh, No Limits, uh, they've managed to help people, you know, get back onto. Uh, uh, social support which is through uh, Centrelink and things like that mm. because some of these people don't even know how to get back onto uh, getting some sort of a help. Is it fair to say too that not all homeless people are, are in a crisis? It is fair. Um, I think that uh, some people do choose that lifestyle. It's um, uh, You do get that uh, and it doesn't matter what you do they'll always revert back to that. Mm. Um, I do think, though, that uh, even those sort of people that choose it, uh, if they could see other options, if they could visualize other options and see what that could be like, mm. or, or you know, um, see what what they could do with their lives, mm. that could then change that that requirement. Mm. But um, in a way, uh, homelessness, in a way, it's like giving up on life, really. Mm. It's not being driven in any direction, um, and once you d once you give up on life, then you know you don't see what the possibilities are for you. Okay, and that's where Fortuna fits in because you st we stay with you for life. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Great, great tagline. Yeah, the accountancy firm does some really good work in that because we mm. cover all areas, mm. um, 
And as I said to you uh, earlier on, um, we're trying to, uh, through the, uh, the practice, also hand back uh, through, um, through doing things like audits for charities and things like that. So we okay. do that pro bono and okay. all that sort of stuff. So uh, th that's, that's just part of the, the handing back process, which is uh, just using the, the intellectual knowledge that we have yeah. uh, where other charities might not have it, but they have a great cause. They just got to cross all the T's and dot all the R's, as you know, with your own your Absolutely, own the ACNC, which is yeah. a great it's a great initiative, but yeah. Yeah, it is a very complicated sort of yeah. minefield. So as we finish off, I know you guys have got a lot of projects that you work with, but where you're looking to evolve, maybe grow, and this is where maybe someone out there might want to help with the drive or the the required information or um, donation to have a mobile medical center. And that can include people that help with mental health, talking about mental health, maybe that's what we're talking about, the conversation that the guys are having, a dentist, or just people that need sort of medical help. Yeah. So how do you see, or what have you got timelines in place for that, or is it just a, an idea, or what would you like to do with that? No, we've wrestled with this for some time, uh, Derek, because to try and find something that is meaningful and something that you can that you can narrow down to a sharper focus mm. that you can actually make a difference rather than focusing on this big global picture. Mm. Um, we've got a, a director that is now just finishing off a strategy plan for us which will revolve around how can we help other charities and also what other initiatives can we get involved in in terms of the smaller sort of, sort of little niche things that we can do so we, we're in the process of thinking about a, a, some sort of a medical ban, which might be either dentistry or it might be medical. Mm. And we, um, we're also thinking about, well, should we combine that with some mental health? Because as you know now, if, if a doctor says to a, a patient, a GP mm. says to a patient, you know, um, and the patient says, I've got some real issues and I'm, I'm depressed and so on, the wait list to see a counsellor goes on... Mm. I think it's uh, it's somewhere in a like a year waiting list to try and get in to see a counsellor. So you know what is what are those people doing that year? Mm. I mean they they do need help. So what are they doing that whole year? So we want to try and see if we can have some uh, early intervention and and just see whether this mental van might help or a medical van might help. Mm -hmm. um, and we're willing to collaborate with other charities to try and do that. Okay. So if anyone that's sitting out there watching, taking the time to watch our interview, could get in touch with you, how do they do that? Um, if they just go to our website, which is uh, the Fortuna Foundation, uh, all the details are on the website, and they can get hold of me personally. My phone number's on there as well, and my, um, my email address. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I, must just, I must just add one other thing, which I don't know if you'll find it interesting though, Derek, but... We have a, a family who has got um, three autistic children and they've, they've quite incapacitated. Mm. Um, they get help from NDIS, but what they do is they actually make um, perfumed soap soaps. Uh, the, the guy that, that actually makes it, the, the one boy, his name is um, Larry Lazar, the laundry lad. Okay. That, and he's got that on his Facebook, Larry Lazar, the laundry lad. Yep. And he makes these, uh, these lovely scented uh, um, crystals that go into the washing mm -hmm. that make your clothes all smell right. And they come in here every month. They donate enough for the van to use for the whole month. They also donate food parcels. They don't want any pay. Right. They don't want us to pay them at all. They're just happy to do it. And this uh, Larry Lazar... He can't really communicate either, so he can't communicate. Wow, that's really special. But we had them in here the other day, and we had some morning tea, and it just shows you what some people go through in, in family life to have three boys like this, but they haven't given up. They, um, they're doing other things. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the other boys makes um, uh, uh, wooden tasting plates, mm -hmm. you know, and he embosses them and... And they, they keep them busy and they keep them keep them occupied. But now it's become quite a thing because uh, Janine at No Limits 
is promoting Larry Lazar. Now, some of the private people are saying, can you get us some of these crystals as well? So oh, wow. it's, it's, a, it's a lovely story. And it's, it um, is a nice story. It is it's something that, um, you know, sort of makes your, uh, your heart warm. Mm, well, thank you for sharing that as well. Yeah. All right. So first of all, uh, thank you, uh, Clive, for the work you do. I'm not sure if many people would be in a position to you know, give you praise for that because it, it's people like yourself that make the world go around and make it a better place. So thank you for that. Um, if you guys want to get in touch with Clive, um, what was the name of the... the it's website? the Fortuna Foundation. That's the name of the website. If you Google that, you'll go straight to our website. And um, and in fact, you can see some photographs of Larry Lazar. He's on there as well. So... Uh, so, but it, and you'll find my, my phone number and, and email on there as well. Awesome. And thank you, Janine, for looking after the laundry van from No Limits. We really appreciate or appreciate the work that you guys do and the volunteers that you have. Um, again, Derek Best, Beacon Fight for Life. Make sure you take the time to smile today.